very um, pleased to be here and get a chance to tell you about what we're doing um, and open at the Euro European Marine Science Park. So doing business in Argyle and Butte, this is about actually having a research centre and actually being able to grow business out from it. Just want to tell you a wee bit, what, what does our research institute, or why does it develop a business? Well essentially to do research now in the UK, you only get a maximum of 80% funding. So to be sustainable, you need to have another income. Also society and the government needs to know that the money they're putting into research is actually got a benefit. It's either growing the economy, it's solving problems, or and creating jobs. So it's very important now that research, wherever it's done, is connected to the local community, the regional community, but also the national community. So it's really important. SAMS is an independent marine research institute. That means that we don't have a, a constant government money coming in. We have to balance our books. So about five years ago, our director at the time decided that we had to grow a business. There had to be a business that would feed back money into the research and keep the whole thing going and also increase jobs. Just to tell you about the SAMS, it's 130 years old. In fact, in a fortnight's time, we have our celebrations for it being 130 years. It was the first oceanographic institute in the world. And John Murray, who you see there, actually started in Edinburgh and then it moved down to Millport. And actually, John Murray, an interesting fact, he made his money for research out of mining. So it was business again that funded the research of the first ever Oceanographic Institute. Started um, in Edinburgh, then moved to Cumbria in 1889 in a boat. Oops, to move. There we go. Then went to Millport in 1897. Came to the Staffordshire in 1967 in Oban. And that's the new facilities now from 2004. Why is it good to do business and do research and create business in our Gail and Butte? We've got superb facilities. We've now got the European Marine Science Park in the New Malin House. And in fact, SRSL has just moved four weeks ago into New Malin House. We have people that come up from universities and from businesses and they say, we don't have these facilities. You have better facilities than we have. And in fact, we've got a top American scientist at home from Scripps who just arrived on Monday and he said, I always thought America did it better. He said, but you've actually got better facilities for us. So we shouldn't forget that. We've got really good facilities and the government and the, the council, Hales and Islands and Enterprise are investing in them and we need to make the most of them. So what are we? Well, we essentially work with business. The marine environment was obviously something special, something you, you, know, you, you enjoyed, you went sailing, you had the beach. But it's becoming a big industry now, whether it's renewable energy, whether it's um, mining, whatever, the fishing, aquaculture, we've had traditionally. It's business, so we have to manage that. And we work with industries either to solve problems or actually to prevent any problems happening. So we work with the mining industry. This is the areas we work. So we work in Scotland, we obviously work nationally as well, but we work all over the world. We cover the world, we work with big businesses and we also work with research industries and development councils all over the world. Marine you know, renewable energy, that was mentioned this morning and that's certainly something SRSL as a business is very much involved in but I would say over the last year our percentage of business from doing surveys for marine renewable energy companies and helping them develop has gone down we're at that kind of flattening out phase where people are wondering where the investment's going to go, about the connection, if we could get the connection, the investment would go back up. Again, there would be more development. We need to make sure we don't miss this opportunity. It's a huge opportunity for the area and for Scotland. And we must make sure this dip doesn't allow it to pass us by. We actually work in the Southern Hemisphere with big mining companies like Newcrest, Anglo American, and Afagasta, which is the 10th biggest copper mine in the world, helping them with their problems, mainly with waste and how they can utilise the marine environment and not damage it. We also have, um, which I think is quite unknown, probably the second biggest in Scotland nuclear analytical laboratory. And that can be used either for monitoring. Um, we can be monitoring natural man-made radionuclides in the environment, but also can be help for business to see what's happening. We do a lot of marine biotechnology, so essentially that's a big area that we're looking at now. It's high value, 
it's an area where within Samsung is specialist expertise and we're working with Highlands and Islands Enterprise Scottish Development International to see if we can actually make the most of this and grow that as a business that will attract economy and jobs to the area. So, so how do we work with the science part? How does Samson SRSL work? This kind of gives you, we've got services, we've got scientific equipment, we've got expertise and know-how, we're, we're creating spin-outs and start-ups, and we've got training, and we've got a real capacity to build capacity and special, uh, specialist skills. And then science part, well, it can invest in specialist equipment for uh, providers. So these providers can come up, for instance, we use a lot of um, technology now that's autonomous. We use gliders that go in the water and go out for six months and measure things. We send autonomous vehicles out. We've got remotely piloted aircraft. The area that we've got, especially for the stuff that goes in the water, is safe and it's access to deep water. These companies that are developing this technology has been used all over the world. That's what they need. They need a safe area they can come and test their equipment in. Again, the area is providing that. It's a beautiful area. We've got the skills and we've got the environment they need. So that's what we're trying to attack, attract to the area. Just to show you the small business that we started, we really just started this business about three to five years ago, and we've been building it up, and you can see there how it's grown. It's about 2.2, 2.5 million this year. But the target for me, and as a manager director, is to try and get that up to 5.2 million in, by 2019. Now that's a, a big stretch, but we believe with national um, working with national companies in partnership, we've been talking to Celex, a big company in Edinburgh, it's got a £500 million turnover and they reckon this year £1 billion. They want to come and work in partnership with us, that we can actually create this. Now the idea of this is to bring more jobs into the area and to provide more in the economy. We are also doing joint ventures, so with an Australian company we've, we've set up a pilot plant for renewable energy. And it's small and Highlands and Isles Enterprise are involved again. However, if we manage and we start producing, it's not now just going to produce biofuel, now gin as well, seemingly. Um, but again, it will start to bring jobs into the area. We also produce um, what's called a sea ice mass balance boy, and this is sold all over the world. And what it does is measures ice thickness. If you've ever seen ice road truckers, they need to know the thickness of the ice. This measures it for them. It also measures um, for companies that are moving into the Arctic, the oil industry, mining. They can put these down, they can see the thickness of the ice, how old it is, where it's moving to. And without that, the businesses can't go on. Again, what have we done? We've looked at the European Marine Science Park, which has got SAMS, which is education. We've delivered the Uber partner, collaborative partner of UHI. So we deliver the marine science degree, we've got 30 to 40 PhD students, we've got SRSL providing services to business, we're trying to help grow the businesses in that area. And there's a region in the United Arab Emirates, the western region, that's very similar except for temperature to our island view. It's got communities that are widely dispersed, they've got young people they don't want to leave, they want to provide jobs, they want to provide education in the area they're in. So actually, we've been asked to come in and look at this and work with sponsors there to actually try and create a similar thing that we've created in Oban out in the western region of the United Arab Emirates. Again, this is to allow SRSL to grow and to bring more profits back into the business. We're also working with the UK Trade and Investment. Uh, so we work with them so again, internationally, we can sell our wares and hopefully bring more economy into the region. So last slide, that's a bit quick run through. I thought, well, doing business in Argyll Butte, and all these things have been mentioned at the beginning, and, and probably both of the previous speakers. But I would say transport links has got to be the main thing. I mean, we are working with Celex, and they were here yesterday, their vice president, and he said to me, Tracy, why will I move my business here? And I said, well, you know, this is fantastic. He says, yes. And I know somebody said, don't say you can get to London. You know, quicker than Danun, but he said to me, Tracy, if I wanted to come here by train, it would take me over five hours from Edinburgh, I could have got to London quicker. It is important, it's important. I've also had people said, yes, we want to come up and talk, we want to do business, but I want to get from London to you and back in the day. We've got to make that happen. However we do it, we must make it happen. 
Everybody thinks the increase in the rail is fantastic. It allows us, if we don't want to drive, to get to Glasgow, to get to the central belt, get to the airport. It's good. It could be quicker. <laughs> and it would be great if it could be. And one of the other things is we do have an airport in Northern. Let's, let's do something about that. Let's use it. I mean, it's going to cost money, but it's going to bring in much more. If we can show it will do, let's use it. Commuting. For our staff, commuting is a big thing. You know, we've got staff that travel every day, 100 mile round trips. Fuel costs are a big thing, we need to think about it. And what I ask members of staff at cross section, they say, get the freight off the roads, get these big trucks, if you can, off our roads. You know, our roads at the moment, we can't change drastically. Can we get them onto the rail? Can we get them on boats? Let's use our harbours again, try and get that off, and then at least the roads might be a bit quieter. Schools, now a big thing, that SAMS is unusual, we've got a demographic in SAMS where we've actually got a lot of young people. We attract kind of young people that are starting families with young children and they want to come here. As our children grow and get a wee bit older, the big question on mind is schools and education, because everybody wants the best education for their children. We've got to look at that and what they said to me, if, wouldn't it be great if our girl and could put their hand up and say, we get the best education in Scotland. And that would attract more young people in again. Housing, well, we've talked about that, and there is more housing coming on. But another one was more affordable, high-quality housing. And another concern, certainly for our staff, is healthcare. You know, if there is something unusual wrong or something different, you have to go to Glasgow, you have to go to Edinburgh. So let's look at our healthcare. Is that something else? It could bring in more business. It could bring in more jobs. Can we do something so that people don't have to go to the central belt? And a big thing for the staff as well is cultural development. I mean, a lot of our staff come and they have spouses. And the spouses do want to get jobs, and a lot of them actually took good jobs with us. But others don't, and they want to have more cultural development. They want to have art centres, they want to have more creative things, they want to have more theatre. Now, we do have, and I know there's a lot of theatre around our guy on Butte, but let's look at that. Can we increase that? Will that attract more people again? And then digital co connectivity just absolutely essential. We need to, because of the travel, be able to do good VC links. If we can do good VC links, then we start to get over some of the problems. That's really important. And what's been said before, historically around half of the economic growth is delivered by population growth. We need to have that. And it can be from natural or net migration. So we want to attract more people in, we want to attract young people in that have families. And I suppose what my thought is, be strategic and focus. Build on the strengths of the regions, but take a few key areas to really focus on so that we can change them. We try and do a scattergun approach, well just a wee bits here and there. And for me, just personally, from what I've heard from people I work with, transport's got to be a major one. So I'll just leave you with that. Thank you very much.